All right, so my Tabor City home here, and we are uh, out here on an absolutely awesome day. It's about 68 degrees out here. It's probably yeah, it's coming up on three o'clock in the afternoon, um, and we're working our way through our list of things to do. So, um, thought I'd take a minute and knock one of these chores out, bring you guys along for it. There's there's uh, <laughs> several chores I do that. I don't bring you guys on because, <clears throat> yeah, sometimes I just want to be able to listen to music while I'm working on cars and things like that. And uh, if you try to do that and then leave the sound on uh, for a video on YouTube, it picks up a copyright infringement and just messes everything up. So uh, there, there's some things I just want to be able to work on. Whatever. So anyways, today, guess what we're doing today? Let's... Uh, Let's take a gander here. So, yep, oil change on the F-250. Um, as you can see, we got our oil filter in our oil. And uh, you need a, if you're gonna do an oil change on an F-250, F-350, any of those super duty trucks, you gotta have a, a little nut like this to take the uh, cap for the, that the oil filter sits in and out. And then uh, the, uh, nut for the oil pan is 19 millimeter so we're gonna run our way through this thing see how we turn out um, bought the filter at Walmart $18 I believe is how much it was uh, tractor supply had the Rotella T4 I think that's T4 yeah Rotella T4 um, you can buy a five gallon bucket of it for $59.99. So I went and picked up the five gallon bucket at the end of last week, or over the weekend, rather. And uh, I need to get this done because it's about the only day in the next five days that I'm not doing something that's going to require either traveling or work. So I uh, just knock it out. I'm, I'm right at 245,000 miles on this truck. So. You know, let's we'll keep plugging along, see where we get with it. Um, yeah, so sixteen, twenty, eighty dollar oil change. Uh, the I was gonna do the filters this go around. Uh, filters right now are running roughly about seven thousand on them, but I think I'm gonna wait until I get to two fifty. Um, I run them them filters for uh, the fuel filters for would be about twelve thousand miles. And I'll just uh, change the fuel filter at 250, and there's two of them. They come in a set, uh, at least from Daryl's they do, and uh, it's like 40 bucks a set. Ain't cheap, but you know, is what it is. So, all right, so let's get started. We'll see what we got. Find a place where the camera ain't gonna fall off. So. First thing we got to do, take this oil filter housing off. Yeah. <clears throat> Get up in here with you. Ugh. Right? Craziness. Craziness. Alright, so. Got our old filter. Step down here and grab the new one. So. You grab these filters. Filter comes. It's got the filter itself and the o ring for that cover. Um, uh, set that down there. This is the top of the oil filter. It actually uh, clips in to the housing there for that filter assembly. So, finish pulling this filter out. Uh, bring it on over. Give it a 
good pull. Let me get back in the box. So we're going to take our new filter. New filter. See how that clicks? You have that positive click there going on. Um, that's what you want. You want to know that filter is being held up in your wheel. Now. Now, unless you're holding a new filter, a new O-ring in your hands, I don't recommend you take out a pocket knife to fill the old one out. So you know you got a new one sitting in your hand. And I definitely recommend you put a pocket knife up before you start messing with a new one. But, the important thing with these filter rings is make sure that as you put them on there, I'm getting them all bombed up and twisted up. And so, all right. Let's turn our camera back around again. So, if uh, if I'm the only person you're ever watching do this, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna give credit for. Now, see how that goes down there like that it pops back up that is a uh, that's what you want to see you want to make sure you have a good spring in there and make sure all that's working the way it should all right so all right anyways um if I'm the only person you watch do this, and that's awesome, whatever, that's great. However, I do have to give credit for, um, for all this to a fella who I have actually really enjoyed his videos. Um, his name's Diesel Ron on YouTube here. Um, unfortunately, you know, I got you know, really excited when I found his stuff because I mean just super knowledgeable um, really 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 cool to uh, listen to and you just automatically know the, that the guy knows his stuff um, but unfortunately if you go diving in his videos which you do I mean it, you know uh, I produce videos for YouTube but I'm a consumer way more than a producer um, so I, I got in there, I saw his videos, loved them. Started really, really getting into watching his videos and came upon a video where, unfortunately, he was involved in an automobile accident and uh, ended up dying as a result of it. And, you know, that's a shame because the guy was just tremendous when it came to, you know, showing you how to do this stuff. So we really lost uh, something pretty special there. Um, not having that guy around anymore. And, you know, I, you just get the feeling... Like, I've never personally met the guy. Um, but you just genuinely got the feeling from watching his videos that he was one of those guys who was the, you know, I know how to do something, so I'm going to help people and pass that along guy. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there who aren't like that. You know, they... They're not really interested in helping other people out. Not interested in teaching other people how to do it. And it's my understanding, uh, you know, if I understand it correctly, that that was that guy's livelihood. I mean, the, uh, the guy who's going to teach you how to do something that could potentially take money out of his own pocket. You know, I mean, come on. Just a fantastic individual, and you know, read a lot of testimonies about him uh, from online. It's pretty neat. All right, I'm gonna run up there real quick and take the oil cap off the top of the motor.
So fuel, or excuse me, oil capacity on this thing is uh, stated at 14.1 gallons. We'll see where we end up with it. But, you know, that's, a, that's more than a Honda, I assure you. Um, so anyways, there's this whole culture of people on the internet who are willing to go out there and show you, you know, the things they know how to do that, you know, literally uh, potentially taken away from their own livelihood doing it. And I think it's a, it's an awesome way for people to be. I mean, you know, if I feel like I know how to do something fairly well, then, uh, you know, I, I try to teach it to other people. Uh, maybe I do it differently than they do, or maybe I do it, you know, the same way and just can explain it to somebody better, however, whatever it comes up to. Um, maybe I'm just total not hit. There is always that possibility. But, um, you know, I don't think that we should take for granted the fact that we have a, a bunch of people out here who post things on YouTube that are instructional, not just entertainment. And, uh, you know, helping other people learn how to do this stuff. So, and that's pretty awesome. Because I have had some really great mentors, uh, some really great guys who have, you know, taken me uh, under their wing and shown me how to work on cars or build stuff or any number of things. And, uh, you know, um, that is, that is how we, that is how we learn to be more than just somebody who sits behind a desk shuffling papers and and you know has to pay somebody else to do everything for them and you know I'm sure there are people out there who are proud of the fact that they don't ever have to touch a wrench Dang. I mean you know I had a desk job for years and years and years and uh, you know there's just there's so little satisfaction in doing things like that where you're not actually building things, where you're not constructing, you're not creating, you're not you're not doing things with your hands, and yeah, it's just it's not as satisfying. I guarantee you, uh, for the most part, that most carpenters and plumbers and welders and mechanics and you know HVAC guys, electricians, those guys who work with their hands, um, at the end of the day when they're you know calling it calling it a day and heading to the house at the end of the day i would guarantee you that the vast majority of those guys have a leg up on uh, the guys who are sitting behind a computer every day because you know they know they got somewhere today and at the end at the end you know they they know daggum well whether or not they did something beneficial or not now i will say that as a paramedic i had the exact same feeling um with that because i mean come on you go pick somebody up they're having a seizure and unconscious when you get to the house you do the right thing you're dropping them off at the emergency room and they're sitting there you know talking to you telling you thank you for helping them you know you know you know you did you know you did your job you know you did the right thing same thing with firemen same thing with so, you know so uh, <clears throat> I like those jobs where, you know, I spend a whole lot of time guessing. My, uh, one of my old jobs, you know, was a lot about building policy for the organization. And the thing about that is, you get into a big organization, which the organization I was building policy for was a fairly large organization. You get into a big organization, and you're building policy, and it is like, you, you, you sit down and you can craft you a well-crafted little email or memo or however you want to put it. And you send that thing out and it is, it's like trying to turn the Titanic with a teaspoon. You, don't, you ain't going to know for weeks or months whether or not what you've done is going to make a daggum bit of difference. Alright, give me just a second, let me grab a rag. So, 
look how special and pretty it is. And this thing is dirty. Yeah, whatever. So. Alright, let's go put some oil in it. Some of that gold oil. What was that the Beverly Hillbilly said? Black gold, Texas tea. Yeah. Huh? Oh. Old Jed's a millionaire. The Ken folks said, Jed, move away from there. He said, Tabor City has a place you ought to be. So, he loaded up the truck and he had to Tabor City. Me and my messy garage. I gotta clean that thing out. <sighs> and now, for the big buckets. My daughter would be absolutely freaking out right now. It's sitting on my iPhone. She would say, Dad, what are you doing? You're going to bend it. You're going to warp it. You're going to break it. Maybe so. This thing shifting around on me. I'm going to be dripping all over the place. Probably should have tried to put this in a little bit smaller container and work on like that. But.
Alright. So. Let's check to see if we got any oil on the dipstick. We're about three quarters of the way up the dipstick, so we're gonna put just a little bit more in there. Take it to the house. Oh man, we're at like 23 minutes for the video here. Right. So there you go. It takes you about 23 minutes doing all the change on that. You have all your stuff together. You know where you're going. You got your quick. some down on the motor. I was gonna have to slap myself in the back of the head. Alright. So there you have it folks. That is Unedited, not a single splice, no edits. I had somebody ask me about my edit. Yes, sometimes I edit for music, sometimes I edit because of cuss. Not proud of it, but to do it. Because sometimes I'm just plain frustrated when I work on stuff. So, anyways, so here we go. My Tabor City home to you. God bless. Yes, I'm a Christian and I cuss on occasion. I'm working on it, alright? Give me a break. Um, change your oil. It's very important. I mean, the entire time I worked in a gas station when I was in high school, um, there were a lot of vehicles that we saw that were in really dire straits. And a lot of those dire straits can have been avoided by people who would have just done the preventive maintenance. Change your oil. Keep an eye on your transmission. All those other things that Grandpa used to tell you. They're all true. So. Anyways. Alright, we're going to fire this thing up. Check up the leaks. And we should be done. As long as there's no leaks, that is the process. Anyways, glad to take you along on this one. Unedited version of an oil change. 26 minutes. My Tabor City home to you. Let's do something with our hands. Let's build something. Let's make something. America is not a disposable nation. We're a nation that was founded by and on the backs of people who actually get off their butt and do stuff. And that's what we need to be. Alright. Clear City home to you. God bless. Go do an oil change on your truck. Needs it.